When we think about modernity in the fossil record, it's natural to think about anatomical modernity. What are the anatomical features that distinguish us as living humans today, that distinguishes us from our primitive prehistoric ancestors in the past? Now again, it's important to recognize that many of these features began appearing a long time ago. Indeed, the primary structure and orientation of our pelvis, for example, is something that goes back five million years ago to Artipithecus, or perhaps the earliest Australopithecines. That wasn't your pelvis, Artie didn't have your pelvis, but Artie had the basic structural changes in the pelvis that are similar to yours and help distinguish yours from those of other primates. Even by the time we get two million years into the past to the origin of the genus Homo, from the neck down, much of our postcranial skeleton is again very much modern in terms of its morphology. This specimen here, K&M ER 1481, is a femur about 1.7 million years of age from East Africa that in many ways is similar to what we might find in a modern sample. It has small differences, differences in size, the orientation perhaps of some of the structures, but for the most part, it's an anatomically modern femur. It would fit right into a modern sequence and demonstrate the same kind of bipedality, perhaps the same kind of running ability that we have as living humans today. As a result, most of our definitions of anatomical modernity focus on the skull, focus on the features of the jaws and the face and our dentition. These are the features that we use to distinguish each other today. Indeed, the entire field of forensic anthropology is predicated on the use of skeletal variation to distinguish between living human populations today. This is possible because we all differ in characteristic ways. So in order to come up with a definition of anatomical modernity, again, it's necessary to think about what kind of variation we see in living populations today, what kind of skeletal variation exists. And to have a definition that encompasses all aspects of that necessarily entails some degree of fuzziness in how we might define anatomical modernity. For example, if we consider the malar notch, that small feature that we noticed on some of the Zhoko Chen specimens from China representing Homo erectus, that's a feature that we associate with anatomical modernity. It's a feature we see with great frequency in living populations today that first appeared 500 or 600,000 years ago in Homo erectus. So the same is true for just about any feature associated with modernity that we might consider. The ones we consider modern are the ones that appear more frequently in populations today and less frequently in populations in the past. So to find anatomical modernity, we need to define it in aggregate. It's not a specific set of features, but rather a set of features that appear more frequently in living populations than they did in past populations. So once again, this is a definition that must be applied on a case-by-case -case basis to consider the aggregate of what features are present within a specimen as opposed to simply going through a checklist and identifying something as modern or not modern.